Hey everyone and welcome back to another Patch 8.2 video. This one is going to be rather monstrous because we will be covering the mounts. There are a ton of mounts. This is already a massive video, so let's just get straight into it. First up, the Wave Rays of Najatar. The Alliance and Horde sell their version from the Ancient Relic seller at their own Najatar hub for 250 mana pearls, and those mana pearls can be obtained from many different sources in Najatar. To farm them, your best bet is to install an add-on like Tomcat Tours for Najatar alongside with handy notes in the Najatar plugin to display the rare locations and to track kills. Your goal is to kill as many rares as you have the time for each day as each one does have the chance to drop some mana pearls and you can loot them all once per daily reset. You'll likely be using these add-ons to find and track other rares and things in this patch anyway, so they're pretty handy to have and it helps getting the mounts. Of course, in addition to those things, community effort is a big focus of this patch, so make sure to keep an eye on general chat for rare announcements. Past that though, just just do your dailies, watch the mission table, and you'll get your mana pearls in no time. Next up, the Silent Glider. This drops from a rare mob called Soundless. Soundless can spawn in multiple locations in the Coral Forest on top of the Coral Reefs. Now, there are a few ways to make it up there, but the easiest is to grab a Deep Coral Pod. This is an item that you can pick up around the area that will increase your jump height, so you'll see them hanging underneath the coral. You then want to knock them down with an ability, loot them, and with this, you can make it to Soundless with some platforming on the nearby corals. Now combine that with a glider and you'll make it up with ease and you can loot him once per day so just work it into your daily routine. Then we've got Fabius who is quite simple. You just find him and take a selfie with him. He sometimes hangs around in the northwest Najatar between the Zangir Terrace and the Ashen Strand in the Bloodfin Grotto. He um, can spawn in a few different places along the um, map so seemingly your best bet is just to keep an eye out for him as you go about your business and occasionally check the pre-made group finder for groups that have Fabius him. Now, after that, we've got the Snapback Scuttler, and oh boy, we're in for it now. This crab is acquired by completing the Undersea Usurper achievement, which basically is the Nashatar meta achievement. Now, don't expect to see this crab anytime soon, because it pretty much is time-gated 13 weeks because of one of the achievement steps, but let's just break the whole thing down. Okay, you have to first of all finish the Nashatar questline, which is simple enough. It's time gated by one quest, which requires you to earn 3,000 follower XP, which usually takes about 10 days, so there's no rush to get that done. You then need to reach Exalted with your faction, which once again is simple enough. If you want to hurry that up, just, you know, return daily, kill the rares, uh, do all of the world quests, do them with a contract buff, and you'll get there. The easiest one to do is just to explore all of Nashatar, but what is less easy is killing all of the rares. Now, most of these are just spawns in an area, so I would recommend using Tomcat Tours or Handy Notes to locate those mobs. That said, there are some, like the Coral Ancients, that are a little bit more involved with that. Now, the Coral Ancients, they are the giant, untargetable coral treants that you will have seen around the zone. So there's Aminar, Kelp, Willow, Orinu, and Urdu. Now, Aminar is first, and he is in the Coral Forest. He is activated by bringing a Colossal Sky Ray from around New Home to him and then killing it. Kelp Willow is just south of New Home and is activated by bringing a Mox Slug over. That's a critter in the zone. You bring that over using a Prismatic Crystal. These crystals grow around the waterfalls in the zone. Then Orinu is to the east of the northwestern flight point and is activated by bringing him a Drowned Hatchling pet. This pet can be purchased from Phelana the Handler, a ghost elf in the Drowned Market by Zinishari for 40 mana pearls. Then the last of these, Urdu, is activated by killing a Staghorn Reefwalker on top of him, and he lives in the northwestern part of the Ashen Strand. Now, there are a few more rares, like the Tide Lords, who need to be summoned in by killing the um, Shari Invokers, and Sandcastle, who can only spawn when opening Scrying Stone Chests, which we'll cover in a little bit. So there's quite a lot of rares to work through. You then also have to find all the Arcane Chests and Trunks, which is easily done by just keeping an eye out while you go around, or of course using the Nazitar plugin in for handy notes. Now, once that's done, find 100 treasures using the Scrying Stone. This is quite simple, but definitely time-consuming. Scrying Stones come from rares and are occasionally sold in the form of Faintly Humming Stones by Merle, the Murloc in your home base. Using these Faint Stones will turn them into a regular Scrying Stone, and once you use the Scrying Stone, you will get a 5-minute buff that will reveal treasures on your map. Just go
go around the place and open as many of those treasures as you can while the buff is up. You'll probably have to do this a good few times. It might take a while, especially given the relative rarity of the scrying stones. So my advice is the same as usual, just kill rares and keep an eye on Meryl. Then next up, you must complete the summons from the deaths 10 times. That's the zone-wide PvE event that occurs every few hours. You'll see all the big skulls in your map, so just when you're spending time in the zone, this event will pop, and when it pops, go at maximum speed to the nearest skull marked on your map. You then need to complete 30 of the bounty slash requisition dailies. It might be a bit of a chore, but if you've done one day there, you pretty much know what to do. Another step is to find all of Ashara's lost cat figurines, and their locations will be on the screen, but you can just use Handy Notes Najatar for that sort of thing. There's then a step to kill all of Ashara's champions through world quests. This is another matter of just logging in once a day and clearing out your world quests, and you will get it. Most of them have already cycled thus far in the patch, so if you're keeping it up, it shouldn't take much longer. Then next, you need to get each of your new Najatar followers up to rank 10. On paper, this will take a total of 30 days based on the current rate of one rank per, you know, one day worth of, of experience from the three quests. However, the Coral Ancient Rares that I mentioned earlier can drop items which increase your, um, the, the rep of your uh, followers, well, like your experience, 100 to each of them. So if you have the time, killing those Corals really does make a lot of uh, sense because each drop from them will remove one day um, of just repping up your followers at a time, which is quite good. Although given a later step, I wouldn't worry too much. Then a more straightforward step is to collect 1,000 Mana Pearls. Now, the more frustrating one is that you must defeat all of Marty Vass's creations from his laboratory and complete all of his puzzles. Now, the puzzles are handy enough, requiring you to do each of the uncrossing the lines and matching the rune puzzles. It's basically just easy, medium, and hard versions of the uh, lay locked and then easy, medium, and hard versions of the um, rune locked chests. This is just going to take a ton of time, but that does not really matter because... The laboratory part is the time gating that is a little bit more unfortunate. It's going to be about 13 weeks because you can only spawn one of the 13 types needed per week. So that's kind of unfortunate. Of course, different combinations spawn a different type for his um, experiments. And yeah, that's the main thing that will hold you back. Then the next achievement step is to buy a secret item from Merle, the Merlock Trader, which will require you to have the Benthic Cloak that unlocks more options for him. Then finally, shoo away 100 Bloodfin Tadpoles. This is done by clicking on the friendly Bloodfin Tadpoles in the Bloodfin Grotto area to the northwest. When shooed away, a weak mob will spawn for you to fight. And overall, it's just a matter of doing that. It'll take quite a while. But still, it's a nice mount meta quest that requires players to really try, but it is a pity that there is the 13 week time gating there that you can't really get around. Anyway, let's move on. We've got the Royal Snapdragon, that's your Nazatar Paragon box reward. So, yes, hit Exalted Rep with your Nazatar faction and just farm until you get it. So, good luck. Then, next, we've got the Alliance and the Horde Follower Snapdragon. So, these are from a quest that will appear once you level a specific Nazatar follower up to level 20. So, Alliance players have to level a Kana and Horde players have to level Neri. Now, this is a simple enough one. You just select the followers each day if you want to get them up quick. And then also consider things like the Coral Ancients for their rep items, which will boost you through this a little bit faster. And a nice thing is that unlocking the Alliance one will unlock its Horde equivalent, so you won't have to pull double duty there. The next, the Ink Scale Deep Seeker is purchased with 150 Nazatar Battle Commendations. These are rewarded for completing the Battle of Nazatar, which is the patch's new PvP event for War Mode players. Winning gets you five, losing earns you one, so just stick War Mode on and get to it. But saying that War Mode is no longer a necessity, Blizzard have hotfixed this to be a little bit easier to get. They realized that the Battle for Nazatar wasn't really working that well with sharding and faction imbalance right now, so they've added a new event called Ashara's Elite Commanders. This is a random event that can occur in Nazatar every once in a while, and slaying the commanders will get you some of the battle commendations. And then finally, we've got the Crimson Tide Stallion. So Merle, the Murloc who you rescue, sometimes will sell this mount to players who are wearing the Ashari Storm Surger cape, which is the one, uh, the Benthic uh, cloak that unlocks more options from the Murloc traders. Now, this Tide Stallion costs four cultist pinky fingers, two pulsating bloodstones, and one hungry herald tentacle taco. Now, these items are available from the Murloc traders around Azhatar, but they have a duration of one, um, just one day, uh, but only can be purchased 
by people who are wearing the cloak. So the Hungry Herald Tentacle Taco. This is picked up from Murloco, a rare spawn vendor summoned in by an event. Now in Murloco's hideaway, the location is on screen. If the event is up, there'll be two Naga guarding a cage. Kill them and then defend the cage from the incoming waves. Once you do that, you'll be able to purchase the taco from him, but only if you have the Storm Surger cape on. Now these items cost other items from the different Murlocs, so when the Tide Stallion appears for sale, you need to run back and forth between all the different vendors, trading the items until you get what you need. Now, if I read out the steps, it would just be confusing, so just pause and read what is on the screen for when Merle has the Tide Stallion up, and that will get you everything bar the Hungry Herald Tentacle Taco. Once you've got the four pinky fingers, two bloodstones, and the tentacle taco, you can purchase the Crimson Tide Stallion from Merle. It won't take a massive amount of time, but it definitely is quite involved. Now, once you've got all that done, let's move over to Mechagon, starting off with the Mechano Cat. The materials for this are very simple. They'll be familiar to anyone who has even spent a single day there, so there's no point going over them. You'll naturally get these materials over a few days of just clearing the zone's content anyway. Now, it's a very unique mount for the reason that it can be dyed. There are eight available dyes, and you can choose between them at the scrapyard. Now, these colors mostly drop from a specific rare, so let's go through them. Big Old Bronze drops from Rumble Rocks, who is to the west of the island. Mechagon Gold comes from the Armored Vault bot, which is a little bit more involved, requiring players to kite it over to an electromagnet in Bondo's yard. Then Lemonade Steel comes from the Scrap King rare just south of Rustbolt, while Overlord Orange drops from the Frungarian uh, Fuhrer, a rare that is spawned while on a specific visitor quest. So when Myloon shows up, take the aid from Norgesil quest. While on that quest, there will be small mushrooms near trees in the quest area. Click on those mushrooms and then use the quest item on them when they transform. If you do this to four mushrooms in total before they despawn, the last one will become the Frungarian Fuhrer. So kill that for the achievement progress and hopefully the paint vial. After that, there's Fell Mint Green, which drops from the Crazed Trog, a rare around Spark Weaver Point. He'll be sitting in a cave untargetable covered in paint and he'll be shouting about how he hates that color. So to activate the rare, cover yourself in that color of paint at Bondo's yard by walking through the paint sprayer and then return to him and kill him. The next color, Fireball Red, comes from chests in the area, so I hope you have good luck. And the last one, Copper Trim, does not have a completely confirmed source, but it has been reported that it comes from a repeatable hand in quest, recyclable parts. I don't believe you can make progress on this until you've completed the prerequisite quest, Factory Refurbished, which is a part of the Scrap Forged Mecha Spider quest line, which I'll address shortly. As for the quest itself, while killing the anodized mobs in Junk Watt Heap, you'll get Hardened Springs, tempered plating, and machined gear assemblies. 30 springs, 10 plates, and 5 assemblies will combine together to give you a bundle of recyclable parts, which you can hand in to the nearby recyclers. I found that an easy way to do this is just to get a farming group, either yourself or through the pre-made group finder, and then just to spend a while clearing the area repeatedly. The spawns are fast enough that you can get these bundles pretty darn quickly, but though I've yet to get the color, so you'll probably need some persistence. Then, and unlocking all of these will reward you with the final blue color. So, that's that. Next up, the Mechagon Peacekeeper, which is a dungeon drop from Operation Mechagon's HK-8 Aerial Oppression Unit. So, just get lucky in that. Then next, the Scrap Forge Mecha Spider, which is a recolor of the Peacekeeper, but with a scrap-like color scheme, is obtained from a questline through Rustbolt. That's from Recycler Kerchunk, and that takes about 12 days of doing one quest per day. There's then one more recolor of this mount, the Rusty Mechano Crawler. This is from the arachnoid harvester which is to the west of Bondo's yard. We've then got two motorcycle wheel mounts. So the Model W comes from the Mechagon meta achievement, so quite a lot in getting this one. First, complete the storyline, which will unfold as you gain reputation. Then get all of the Mechano Cat dies. Then complete every visitor request, so just arrive in Mechagon every day and scour it till you've seen them all. Then unlock 20 blueprints from the list. Now the blueprints pretty much all come from rares, bar a few which are from the rep vendor, so it's basically just the same as other rare killing steps, just kill all of the rares. Honestly, I would not worry about this step, I think you'll complete this as you sort out the other things in this list. The next one is a bit of a pain though, 
that's completing 100 construction projects. This will require a lot of time moving around the zone and searching for incomplete construction projects. What I've essentially been doing is sniping the completion of the big ones like the reclamation rig, and I've been saving spare parts instead of spending them on this. Now, keep an eye on the minimap for projects like the armories or the broken flame turrets, and just do those whenever you can. There's then another somewhat arbitrary one, which is crafting 250 items from Pascal. This is just going to boil down to crafting the cheapest item when you, uh, you know, the cheapest one possible to get the achievement finished. Now, I don't imagine you'll need to actively farm spare parts for this, but uh, if you want to, here's our tip. Do the reclamation rig event when it spawns, and then we found that if you really want more spare parts, uh, refer to the recyclable parts farm earlier on in this video for the copper trim die section. In uh, doing that, I think in staying for three quest turn-ins, we got a few thousand scraps, so that's a really good way of doing it. Now, in order to get this from zero items, you'll need to make 250 scrap grenades, which will cost 12,500 spare parts. Yes, that sounds like a lot, but it's really not that bad. A few hours of group uh, farming will do the trick. Now, the next step is another daily, finishing each of Rocket Chief Fuselage's weapons, which is just a matter of returning every day and uh, doing this whenever the quest is up. Then another step is collecting the gramophone and all of the music for it. Now, the gramophone is made from a blueprint that drops from Steel Singer Freza, a robotic harpy that spawns in the southwestern island of Mechagon. As for the vinyls to put into it, though, they come from rares in the zone. So far, there have been confirmations that the Battle of Nomergon, the Depth of Ulduar, comes from Old Big Tusk and uh, Boilburn. Then Nomber Gone Forever comes from Bogak and the Nullifier. Mimron's Brainstorm comes from the recycling requisition boxes from the recycling quest discussed earlier. And the Triumph of Nomber Gone comes from the box awarded for completing the Reclamation Rig event. Completing the event will give you a box that can contain Mech Gone uh, tinkering items and then possibly the vinyl. So yeah, quite a lot there. Then possibly the heftiest one is next though. Completing all of the special encounters. Now most of these are simply rares that spawn randomly to be killed. Um, I addressed the Vault Bot, the Crazed Trog, and the Fungarian Fuhrer earlier on. There are seven that are tied to drill rig construction projects, so keep an eye out for zone-wide messages that announce their activity. The JD drills are on either side of Junkwat uh, Depot. The CZ drills are around the center of the island, heading over to the outflow, and the TR drills are by the Trog area. There are then some more interesting ones, like the Doppelgang. They require three pressure relief valves to be fitted to the exhaust pipes by the contraption outside the Craze Trog cave at Sparkweaver Point and then activated. One of these valves comes from the daily quest um, Cog Frenzy's Construction Frenzy. This does mean that access to this rare is somewhat limited, but uh, you know, smart users of the pre-made group finder should be able to sort you out there even if you don't have a valve yourself. There's then Spark Queen Pemp, who will only spawn around Spark Weaver Point when um, the bugs, lots of bugs, quest is up. Then Bogak is similar, only spawning when the drill rigs are um, available as a construction project. There's a few more, like the Oxidized Leech Beast, which um, is spawned by activating the weather alteration machine in Junkwat uh, Depot, which um, requires an exothermic evaporator coil. That's an item that's dropped by the nearby rare Mr. Fix This. Okay, so next there's the 00X Avenger MG. G, which requires killing the 00X Fleetfoot when um, Oglethorpe Obnoxious is visiting the island. The Fleetfoot is a chicken that's running around the zone with 6 million health, so um, that'll definitely be a group effort. So uh, if you see Oglethorpe um, in Rust Bolt, then check the pre-made group finder for Avenger groups. The Rusty Prince exists in the alternate timeline Mechagon, so when Chromie is visiting, head over there and just keep an eye out for him. He should be near Junkwalt Depot. Then there's one last rare of interest, Gear Checker. Cogstar. This guy acts as a backup for the upgraded sentries. So once enough of those has been killed, this guy will teleport in for a fight. If you want to kill him, just hang around outside of Junkwat until he pops up. Basically, for this achievement, I would highly recommend checking out Tomcat Tours, uh, just to make sure where every rare is, and then pay attention to general chat in Mechagon. Players do tend to work together in this patch, thankfully, and it's actually quite a nice experience whenever a rare is announced in Slash 1, and a legion of, you know, players are going over there for the tag. That's um, definitely a nice thing, where Blizzard seem to be hitting their timeless isles like field 
ideal for the rares. However, if you like the model and don't care for the color, there is the Junk Heap Drifter. It's a rust colored flavor of the wheel and it drops from Rust Feather, a mechanical bird up in the mountain to the south. Then finally, there are two flying mounts, the Aerial Unit R21X and the Rust Bolt Resistor. So the R21X is a new shiny colored one and it just drops from King Mechagon at the end of the new dungeon. So that's pretty cool. Good luck getting the drop. If you like the aesthetic, but don't get lucky with the drop rate though, you can get the rusted version of the same model, the Rust Bolt Resistor from the stolen Royal Vendor bot in Rust Bolt for the paltry sum of uh, 420,000 gold after reaching Exalted with the Rust Bolt Resistance. Then for professions, there is only one mount this time around, the Zillywag ATV. Yup, it's Gallywicks backwards. These are created by combining a monolite reinforced chassis, which is made by blacksmiths, and the supercharged engine, which is made by engineers, and plans for both of those drop from KUJO, a boss in Operation Mechagon. As for the reagents, well, they just use regular BFA, BS, and engineering reagents, as well as Expulsum, um, instead of the new A2 items. So crafting it actually should be pretty cheap as long as you have the plans, but of course, if you are capable of crafting it, it could be quite lucrative because both items are bind on equipped. Uh, so yeah, if you're not a crafter, you can just pick these um, things up in the auction house and that'll probably be a nice way of people making some money. Then there are the older wrap mounts. So each of the 80 factions for the Alliance and the Horde have an extra flying mount at 72,000 gold if you're exalted. That is of course with the exception of the war effort and the Tortolans. Then next up, we just have some other ones to round up. We have the Proto Drake for rated PvP gameplay. Yup, there's another one of those follows usual rules. Then raiders get a raid meta achievement mount, the Ashara bloat ray, but there's no mythic mount from Ashara it seems so far. Then there's the Wonder Ring 2.0, which is the long awaited mechanical parrot that is earned by completing the Battle for Azeroth Pathfinder Part 2 achievement. So that's pretty good. I think that's what most people will be rushing towards anyway. Then there's one last mount available, the Child of Torkali. For the Horde players familiar with the How to Train Your Direhorn questline in Zuldazar, this patch has added a final quest, Wonder Not Alone. This quest will see the little Direhorn friend from the 8-0 questline grow into a big magnificent mount that you can ride into battle. We actually don't know anything about the quest yet, but uh, I'm sure the people in the secret community are working hard to find out how to actually get it. Oh boy, so there you go, that's it for the 8-2 mount guide. This was a massive guide, this is a big effort from uh, a lot of Matt, and uh, a bit from myself, a lot of writing, a heck of a lot of editing from Connell, this one really took really big team effort getting this guide together for you, so I hope you found it useful, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, certainly, I, I, I guess in 13 weeks or maybe 11 weeks, we'll see everybody going around with their sideway crabs and uh, we'll see what 825 brings, I suppose. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I think I'm just going to lie down. That sure was a lot of word salad to get to. Thanks for watching. See you next time.